Incursions are just around the corner and everyone is going to be racing to get them down ASAP so they can get their hands on those sweet, sweet set items. In this video, I'll tell you how to set up your team composition to achieve the absolute maximum DPS, survivability and CC capability that this tier of gear has to offer. And I'll even model your theoretical max DPS so that you can see the numerical proof as to why this team composition is so damn strong. Guys, it's Skill Up here and welcome back to another Division video. Today, I wanted to give you a very quick rundown of what I'm sure will be the very best and most powerful team composition that you and your team will be able to bring to Incursions when they drop on April 12th. The devs have stressed that Incursions will be hard and that team synergy will be key. So properly loading out your squad is likely going to be very important if you're looking to take down Incursions challenge mode as quickly as possible. So guys, if you like this video and you happen to find it useful, then I would really appreciate a like and a subscribe. It does help me out in a big way. And with that, let's get started. So let's clear something up straight away. You will not need a tank for incursions. I'm currently in the process of putting together a four part series on PVE tanking, but the spoiler alert on that is that PVE is just the PVE tanking is just not worthwhile in its current form as it lacks key tools to make it viable, like a reliable taunt, the ability to quickly reposition, the ability to protect your team from long range threats like snipers and a whole bunch of other stuff. So tanking can be really great to stop shotgunners, but CC works even even better than this and you actually don't need to sacrifice a DPS spot in order to bring CC to the table. So long story short, you do not need a tank for incursions. So what should you bring then? Well, ideally you'd be wanting to bring two people with over 40k skill power each. One of them focused on healing and the other one focused on buffing. And then two dedicated DPS who build full glass cannon. So let's talk about how to build each of these, uh, these characters so that we're all bringing the maximum amount that we can to our team. So let's start with our first skill, uh, skill power person first, who will nickname Healbot. Now, Healbot's only job is to keep the team alive and to keep your DPS buffed with bonus damage. Sure, he can DPS if he gets a chance, but his DPS is going to be very underwhelming compared to that of his DPS focused teammates. So his job is to keep his teammates up at all costs. So how should Healbot be building? Well, first of all, for weapons, Healbot is going to want a Caduceus with the competent talent activated. Uh, ideally, with his skill power stacked high enough, he won't have to worry about his abilities not being on cooldown. But for the moment when he needs to push out even more healing than was planned, or you know, just needs his cooldowns up faster, it's really super helpful. For his secondary, he's going to want a marksman rifle so that he can contribute some DPS, or consider perhaps an LMG to provide suppression when it might be helpful. The Caduceus already has some decent range on it anyway, so you don't really need a marksman rifle, and this extra suppression can actually be quite useful in clutch moments. For abilities, Healbot is going to want to spec into Heal, modded with Booster Shot, which gives your targets, uh, the, the targets that you heal, a temporary damage buff in the area of around 13%, which is a very nice buff and should be used on cooldown on your DPS to keep their throughput up as much as possible. He's also going to want to use First Aid Station with Ammo Clip. Your DPS are going to be going hell for leather 24-7 on this, and you don't want them worrying about ammo at any point, so keeping this down at all times is a huge help there. For talents, the critical one here is triage, which, de which decreases your skill cooldowns by 15% whenever you heal a target. And since you're healing pretty much all of the time, this can be a pretty strong, in fact, an extremely strong uh, assistance to your team. The rest of the talent options don't matter all that much. So just pick your sort of vanilla DPS slash survivability focused talents as you see fit. For gear, Healbot needs 40k skill power to get his abilities to the right level. More skill power than that will nerf your other stats too heavily for far too little return. So stack skill power and then look for a fair and even distribution of your other stats. In terms of how you might recalibrate your gear, aim for the plus support station healing speed uh, stat as you want to be sort of having this ticking as often as possible to provide more healing for your team. So that's Healbot. Let's talk about our next skill power team member who we will affectionately nickname Buffbot. So as the name implies, Buffbot's job is to keep your team as buffed as possible through constant uptime on his ability. So how do we build Buffbot? 
Well, for weapons, Buffbot wants a Caduceus for the same reasons that Healbot does, to keep his abilities off cooldown. For secondaries, consider a Marksman Rifle for a pure DPS, or as I've mentioned before, an LMG to provide suppression as required. For abilities, Buffbot wants Smart Cover modded with Heal. Now, I want to be really clear here and say that Smart Cover is essentially what makes this whole composition hang together. It provides your DPS with a massive damage boost and a huge increase in survivability, and with appropriate amounts of skill power, it has nearly 100% uptime. In essence, when this is up, you and your team are using it, you're totally fine. It gives you about 67% damage reduction, which is huge. However, when it's not up or your team are not using it, you are very much exposed. So watch out for that. For the other ability, Pulse with Tactical Scanner is a must as it provides a huge damage boost to your team and your teammates. Uh, and again, you know, you can very easily maintain near 100% uptime with this. So we'll talk more about total DPS increase you can expect from this ability later in this video. For talents, it really doesn't make much of a difference here. Again, aim for your sort of cookie cutter DPS slash survivability focused talents. For gear, Buffbot also needs his 40k skill power. When building, try to focus on the plus pulse crit damage stat or the plus smart cover damage stat as much as possible, as they're the only stats that you can roll on your armor that can reliably increase your DPS using these important abilities. And that's Buffbot. So quick note here, Buffbot is by far and away your most important team member. When he dies, things very quickly go south. So make sure Buffbot is reliable and capable and doesn't stick his neck out all too often. Again, his job is to keep the DPS buffed, not to be doing DPS himself. And finally, we come to our two DPS team members who we'll just simply call glass cannons since that's what they're going to get called anyway. Now, your glass cannons aim to build for maximum DPS, foregoing any and all skill power and relying only on the bare minimum of stamina to get by. So, how do we build our glass cannons? Well, for weapons, your bread and butter here is your M1A. Now, I won't go into the specifics around this now, but essentially, you know, pound for pound, the M1A with balanced is unquestionably the best weapon in the game at the moment. Other weapons like a well-rolled black market AK can also be very good as a primary, but their stability trade-off is just is, is very large, uh, especially when compared to an M1A. Um, I've modeled this extensively. I've used it in game a lot. Uh, just trust me on this. The M1A is unquestionably your best weapon for PvP for PVE encounters. For your secondary, I'd go with an SMG. I'm not going to enter into the debate about which is better, the Vector or the Org or the MP5. As to be honest with you, I find the debate a little bit. Um, um, not helpful, but look, to be honest with you, they're all pretty much the same. And you're going to be making a decision based on which one has the best talents anyway. So just go with the best one you have and don't overthink it. The point of the SMG in this slot is to deal with any threats that are rushing you, such as shotgunners or drones. So you need something that can burst down a target quickly and reliably. For abilities, uh, none of your sort of your abilities will have any skill power to them, so they're all going to be pretty rubbish from a damage, healing, or buffing perspective. What you can bring to the table, though, that's largely unhindered by your crap scaling, is CC. Take flashbang and seeker mines modded with gas. When enemies rush you, it will be the job of the of the DPS to CC the enemies with flashbang, DPS them a bit, CC them with gas, and then kill them before they wake up. For talents, your best DPS talents are One Is None, which I've done a video on already and is by far and away the best talent in the game. Beyond that, again, aim for talents which will sort of keep you alive or increase your DPS, such as for instance Steady Hands, which massively increases weapon stability for 10 seconds when you take cover. And finally for gear, just aim for maximizing DPS stats, you know, crit, crit hit damage, bonus damage to elites. These things are all good stats, so stack them as high as you can. You want to max out your firearms as much as possible, but don't go too crazy on your HP. I think somewhere in the vicinity of around 40 to 50k is reasonable, as you should be able to survive one or two bullets when you're in smart cover. Any less than that and you risk being very easily one shot. So that's the loadout, Healbot, Buffbot, and two glass cannons. But just how effective is this team composition from a raw DPS perspective? Well, I took the time to model the numbers using divisiondps.com. So if you're interested to hear more about that, then keep listening. Otherwise, feel free to end the video here as I've now already covered all of the sort of how-to content. 
So let's talk baseline. For this, I've used my own gear and gear sets. Now, given how much time I've sunk into this game and how extensively I've viewed other people's builds, I'd put my gear in about the top 15th percentile. And what I mean by that is my, my gear could absolutely be better, but it's pretty close to being, you know, up there as a, as a very complete end game set. Regardless, it's a very good starting point from a DPS perspective in terms of a benchmark. So in my standard firearms gear, my character can generally output a base of around 300,000 DPS with my superior M1A if I calculate for a 70% headshot chance. And that's true DPS. That's not what you see on the character sheet because that's total rubbish. Ignore that number. This is actual calculated real DPS. Now, I know I play on PC and it's much easier for me to land headshots. So apologies to all my console brothers out there who feel like this number isn't realistic. I totally hear you and you are totally right. But for this, I am going to be using this number because that's what it's like for me on PC. With my electronics build, I'm typically putting out around 130k DPS with my Caduceus with a 70% headshot chance. And again, your mileage will vary, but this generally works for me. So with this, my team has a total combined DPS of 840,000 damage per second. So that's all four of us firing our guns at once. Yep, the total team damage is 840k, which is not too bad. So let's start buffing the hell out of this. So I'm calculating the following buffs. Smart cover is going to be giving us 45% damage. Tactical pulse will provide 10% damage, 40% crit and 85% bonus crit damage. Uh, the modded heal will provide me 13% bonus damage for 10 seconds every 20 seconds. So I've essentially just normalized this out to a flat 6.5% damage increase. And that's it, they're all the buffs. So if we fully math all of that out, we now get to a DPS figure of 2.2 million DPS. Yes, 2.2 million. Now, if you don't believe me, and you think this kind of looks a bit crazy because fair enough, they are pretty crazy numbers. I've actually dropped all of the workings that I've done to support this into a spreadsheet that you'll find linked in the description below. It's it's linked to a Twitter, a tweet that will boot, that will then send you to the Google Docs because for some reason I can't actually link Google spreadsheets in my description. It doesn't let me do that. So that's why I link it to my Twitter. So that's it guys. Um, that's what I think will be the best team composition for incursions. It's already absolutely the best team composition for challenge modes. Um, I run it frequently and I can tell you it's extremely strong. We basically just melt through challenge modes in, in seconds, not literally seconds, but very quickly. So guys, I'm super pumped for incursions and I can't wait to jump into them. If you found this video at all helpful, then please drop a like uh, as it helps me out in a very big way. And don't forget to subscribe. As I've said, I've got a four part tanking series coming up. I know I've been saying that for a while, but it's a lot of work and I just had a lot of other things happening. I've just released a collaboration video with Arix covering the best weapon and and gear talents. So you can actually find the weapon talents video on my channel and the gear talents on his channel. I do a weekly highlight reel for the state of the game, um, you know, the developer streams. Uh, so you can always watch that on my channel every week on Tuesday night, Sydney time. And I'm currently drafting another series that's aiming to outline how to properly mod each weapon, including the recently announced high end weapons that we can expect to get as part of the next big update. So subscribe to stick around and check out all of that stuff. Guys, thanks for watching so much. I really appreciate it. Take good care and see you in the dark zone. Bye-bye.